Hi, thanks for joining us for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. I'm Chris Cooper. School's out and it's time for summer camp. Master Gardeners run a summer camp that's all about plants. Also, the pawpaw tree is easy to maintain and produces edible fruit. That's just ahead on the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. Production funding for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South is provided by Goodwin's Landscape and Garden Center in Germantown since 1943 and continuing to offer its plants for successful gardening with seven greenhouses and three acres of plants plus comprehensive landscape services. International Paper Foundation, the WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to the Family Plot. I'm Chris Cooper. Joining me today is Becky Burns. Miss Becky is a master gardener right here in Shelby County. That's and right. Carol Reese is with us today. Carol is the ornamental specialist for UT Extension. Thanks for joining me, ladies. Thank you for inviting me. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Miss Becky, so plant camp is coming up, right? Yes, it is. Let's tell the folks all about it. It's June the 15th through the 19th. It's five days okay. for our kids, 8 to 12. It's held at the Agri Center uh, right across the street from the Red Barn outside. Uh, it's sponsored by Agri Center International as okay. well as the Master Gardeners and Master Gardeners are the volunteers that run the camp. Um, camps every day from 9 to 12. The kids do, well this year the theme is Green Adventures. Green Adventures. Okay. And like it's going to be a junior Master Gardener camp this year. So by the end of camp they will be all certified to be junior Master Gardeners. They'll have certificates. They'll have a t-shirt with Junior Master Gardener on the t-shirt. Uh, they'll do activities to fulfill all those requirements every day during the week. Pretty nice. Junior Master Gardeners. That's cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's pretty cool. Hopefully one day they will be Master Gardeners. Yes, How about they that? will. I think they're going to get neat. so involved in planting. Well, good deal. So again, the age range for, age range for the kids is? 8 to 12. 8 to 12. Now, what's the cost of the camp? $35. Okay. And that includes snacks every day, the t-shirts, all the activities, all the crafts. They get to harvest a garden, actually, yes. that is planted. They get to dig up potatoes and onions and take them home at night and cook them for dinner. I think that's pretty neat. It is. Uh, they remember, love it. I remember last year, the kids dug up some potatoes, mm -hmm. and you were telling the kids, you know those McDonald's French fries that you like? Mm -hmm. Here they are. Here they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this I is where they came this from. This is where they come from, so I think that's pretty neat. Now, can we talk a little bit about the daily activities? Like, so what happens on Monday when it first starts? Okay, Monday, mm -hmm. the theme, each day has a different theme to okay. go along with our main theme of green adventures. Uh, Monday is plant uses okay. and we'll have a medical professional there who is going to talk about how plants are used for medicines. We're going to talk about plants are used for food. They're going to make a hamburger plant which is going to mm. be real interesting because hamburgers really aren't plants. <laughs> um, Tuesday uh -huh. is um, plant uh, plant needs and they're going to learn about what plants need and these are some of the things they're going to do right here. These are our plant people that they'll do on Wednesday. <laughs> okay. And they're going to have to plant the seeds and take care of them and water them and then decorate them and put the eyes or whatever they want to. And then they'll grow. Okay. This is just a two week growth of our little seed. Wow. Pretty neat. I know, it's very cool. What is that, Becky? Stocking? Yes, this is a knee high pantyhose. Oh, actually. wow. Oh, cool. And the, the seeds go in at first, you fill it with dirt and you stick it in here. And you can even see all the cool roots. Goodness. Yeah, some nice roots in there. And, no, what kind of seeds? Uh, it's, I would ask you that. Yes, you would. It's, I think it's <laughs> pesky. Okay. It's something that says bare root. I mean, bare, bare plot okay. cover. But it's pretty green. It's pretty green. Mm -hmm. And then they're also going to make these. And to make, these are vertical gardens. And eventually they'll be hung up, they can be hung up oh, yeah. on the walls. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And they're going to have to do some hammering. Here's what they look like before they're planted. Okay. But they have to do some hammering to put them together. They have to unscrew them to take the net off and then put the dirt in, screw it all back together and hammer the hangers are on this side. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, and then plant them and with seedlings or succulents because these all have very shallow root systems so they don't need a really deep place to grow and lots of water. And they also have places in the top to water. Oh, I see that. Okay. So this will be a lot of fun. Okay. Uh, we play neat. games every day, every day. We play lots of different games. The okay. kids are busy and active, snacks related to the themes. Okay. Uh, what, what kind of games? 
What kind of games? One of them is with, um, actually with poker chips, and the different <laughs> colored poker chips represent things that the plants need, okay. either water or space or air and, um, or sun. And they get a handful, and they have to decide if that's going to help them. You know, they're on the ground. They have to move to wherever it is and make sure that, oh, I'm not going to grow very well because there's no sun over here. There's no okay. white poker chips or... And they get to move them around. So lots of games. Sometimes we go outside just to do relays, just to get some energy taken care of. Okay. Are y'all still doing Jeopardy? Yes, on Friday. I like the Friday Jeopardy. Friday mm -hmm. is propagation day, and they get to learn how to make plants from other plants. And then um, we do Jeopardy, which is questions from the whole week. Mm -hmm. um, okay. They get to harvest again on Friday. I mean, not harvest, plant again on Friday. Okay. And then we have a reception for the parents. And we have a theme nice. song that we sing every day about the <laughs> needs of the plant. So we'll sing that for the parents on Friday and show some of the things that we've done. We're going to do a rap wow. about the parts of a plant. <laughs> and we have drums that they're going to get to play drums on our rap to really make it a real rap. Wow. So we're rapping, wow. we're singing, we're, yes, hey, we we're do. planting, huh. we're harvesting. It's a it's, busy week and it's a wow. lots of fun. And we have lots of volunteers that are wonderful. Sure. The we sure do. We sure do. All is for the kids. Yes, sir. How about that? I'm, I'm enjoying that. So if people want more information about Plant Camp, how do they find it? They need to, uh, Tim Roberts yes. is from the Agri Center and uh, he has all the information. Mm -hmm. uh, if they go to the UT Extension website, they can download the application, fill it out and do it online or they can pick it up at the Master Gardener office as well. Okay, and Tim Roberts is a UT Extension agent. Right. Yeah, he works in our office, does a great job he with is. the kids. He's lots Amazing of fun. Amazing job. And, and tell the folks one more time, okay, so when is Plant Camp and how much does it cost? Plant one Camp is June the 15th through the 19th, $35 for five mornings for kids 9 to 8 to 12. 8 to 12. That's a bargain, I think. It, it's a big bargain. For all that. Yeah. yeah. You can't beat it. And they'll go well, home well. every day with something. I right, appreciate related. that information, Ms. Becky. Thank, Thank you. you much. There are a number of gardening events going on in the next couple of weeks. Here are just a few that might interest you. Hi, right, Ms. Carol. Paw Paw. Oh. Let's talk a little bit about Paw Paw, especially the history. Definitely want mm -hmm. folks to hear that. I, I know. I was thrilled when you said we want to talk about Paw Paw yeah. because I told you I feel like I'm the patron of Paw Paw. <laughs> right. And why is it not more popular? I mean, it, it, there's so many movements now. Native, uh, edible fruit for your own backyard, True. butterfly gardening because it's a host plant. So there's so many reasons to have it in our landscape. Right. But... It, to start with, it is a native tree that we find in our understory and far more common than people realize. It's really not hard to find in rich uh, understory all throughout West Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And when you do, it's usually kind of a, a grove. It's all one plant actually interconnected by rhizomes. Um, it has the largest North American fruit. Yeah. And it is very tropical in flavor and in scent. And in fact, it is the last surviving member of a tropical family that was wiped out by the ice ages. Wow. But the pawpaw said, you know what? I can make it here in North America. I'm made of tough stuff. <laughs> it survived. Stuff. Oh, good. So it, it's historical interest to me. I, I love everything Lewis and Clark. I've probably read I know you do. Of, mm -hmm. I know you do. <laughs> I just think that is such a cool time. Right. And their adventures when they went out. Of course, they were trained somewhat botanically before they left on their adventures by Thomas Jefferson. Right. And so they were collecting things. And they were, uh, of course, packed a lot of food with them, but they began to run out of starches. They were not starving because they were good hunters and they could kill meat. But they were actually losing weight because they were on a forced Adkins diet. <laughs> so, uh, when they oh, ran boy. into Sacagawea, and there's different ways of pronouncing it, I know, mm -hmm. and so I'm not sure if I'm saying that properly, Sacagawea, some people say. Wow. She was the one who taught them some of the wild foods that they could eat on the way, which uh, tubers they could dig out of the wild, and then the fruits that they could eat. So she turned them on to the pawpaw. Okay. So for that reason, pawpaw is still celebrated at Monticello. And Thomas Jefferson and George Washington kind of shared a love for plants. A lot of people don't yeah. realize that a lot of times they exchanged plants. And it turns out that uh, George Washington's favorite dessert was a chilled pawpaw. How about that? Isn't that cool? Oh, that is mm -hmm. cool. 
There are recipes if you want to, you can find online. You can even find Paw Paw Festivals in different parts of the country. Okay. So wow. I, I think that's something that people might be interested in that are growing more of their own backyard fruit, but they need mm -hmm. to realize it's not really easy to just plant one Paw Paw tree and get fruit. They have to have two separate seed grown clones to pollinate each other. Okay. So if you find that big grove out in the woods, it's actually one clone and it cannot pollinate itself. Okay. So two separate green seed grown individuals and they have to be fairly close because oddly they're pollinated by flies and beetles and they don't fly very far like our bees would. Bees can travel great distances to do the pollination but flies and beetles aren't very enthusiastic. So the two need to be planted fairly close and sometimes even people will do hand pollination with taking the pollen off the flower mm -hmm. with one and dabbing on the other if they're afraid they don't have the right pollinators. Apparently there's a good bit of difference from one clone to the next about the fruit quality. So there have actually been selections made from the wild for superior fruits and they've wow. been given names uh, like Rebecca's Gold and mm -hmm. Sunshine and Sunflower. And they're actually available in Tennessee from a mail order nursery yeah. in Hidden Springs, called Hidden Springs Nursery in Cookville, Tennessee. Okay. So, and those are actually grafted so that you can actually know that you're going to get the superior fruit. And then, of course, the other reason we want to grow it is for the uh, state mm -hmm. butterfly. Our mm -hmm. state butterfly is the zebra swallowtail, mm -hmm. and its caterpillars will feed only on pawpaw foliage. So The only host plant for only it. Only host plant for it. Just a real specialist okay. there. Mm -hmm. Wow. So if people uh, are interested, in, and the conditions that you normally find it in the wild are in the shade, right. but it will actually flower and be a better formed tree in sun. Mm -hmm. So you can put it in the sun, it will form more of a big pyramid rather than just mostly trunk with a few upper leaves. Okay. And it will produce more fruit for you in sun. I usually see them understory. Right. Yeah. Overton uh, Park. Yeah. Huge population of them in the back of Overton Park and they're understory in there and some of them with yeah. trunks that big around which is kind of rare in the wild. Yeah, Memphis Botanic Garden. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. That's another place where I've seen uh -huh. them understory. And you look at them, those big leaves kind of tell you it's tropical. Yeah. You know, they look very thing. tropical. And the fruit, again, tells you that it's tropical. And sometimes it's called poor man's banana. Okay. But a yeah, I was going to ask you, what did it taste like? Yeah. It's sort of banana. The, the texture is banana-like, but it has a little bit more of a pineapple-y smell just in that tropical realm. It, it's pretty good. Some of the ones that aren't the best flavored have a little bit of a hint of turpentine quality, wow. just a little bit of a bite. Hmm. But again, there's a, a, a good chance that you're going to get a good one, even if you just plant a seed-grown individual and not necessarily a grafted individual. Okay. Yeah. So you can actually grow them for seed? It, it oh, be, they're easily grown they're from seed. Easily grown from in seed. In fact, good. the ones that I got started on our farm down in Mississippi, I gathered the ripe pawpaws in Overton Park, okay. which will be late summer. Late when summer. when you want to start okay. looking good, for them. Good. Uh, and they're kind of hard to spot when they're green because they kind of blend in. Okay. But start looking on the ground. A lot of wild things will eat them, and you'll smell them as well. And uh, gather those, clean the seed, go ahead and plant them that fall because they need to go through the winter chill before they're going to sprout in right. the spring. But then they come up readily. I mean, almost every one of them sprouted. What about that? What would you plant them in? I just planted them in regular potting, just soil. regular potting soil. But if you just wanted to get them established, if you've already got a good place for them to grow, say a, a kind of a woodland area, and you want to plant them on the edge, I just press them down into the soil in okay. the fall and look for them the next spring and maybe mark them so that you don't accidentally step on them or mow them down. Wow, so good germination rates. Very good germination wow. rates for them. Very good. Mm -hmm. Now how about this? What about any pests or diseases Well, the we only know of? pest would be yeah. our zebra swallowtail. Okay, okay. So if you see the leaves eaten, don't run for your spray. <laughs> right. Uh, look up the caterpillar and you can easily recognize that I'll use, you know, a lot of times the internet to do the image search so they'll know what they're looking at. Okay. But no, there's no pest uh, at all, which is another good reason to grow the plant. Yeah. So, and it's, it's an attractive plant. It's one flower as a landscape plant is the fact that it does tend to sucker and form a colony. <clears throat> so if it does, you may not want it to do that. Simply remove those suckers as soon as you see them. But it would be great if you could put them in an area where you could let it colonize. In fact, if the two separate individuals could kind of interweave, then you'll get a lot better pollination mm -hmm. rates and much better uh, fruit bearing, which is what has happened, I believe, in Overton Park. Okay. Because Overton Park's a very heavy fruit bearing population. Wow. Late summer is when we need to yes. take out the fruit. Okay. Right. Uh huh. And again, Hidden Springs Nursery in Cookville, Tennessee, uh, run by Hector Black and his mm. daughters. Uh, very ethical, good. In fact, they specialize in backyard fruit that can be easily grown with uh, low input.
Good deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds like something the homeowner should right. invest in to me. <laughs> yes, I agree. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I like the history. I do, too. You know? Yes, I know. There's so much uh, yeah, fun neat. things to tell kids about it, too, you know, to get so. them interested in gardening, too, at a young age, uh -huh. which ties in with what you're doing. Right. With plant camp. Right. 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 Uh -huh. Next year, we'll do Sacagawea and the Oh, cool. No, I don't know. You should but we should consider it, though. Right. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll think about mm -hmm. that. That's to do pretty the history neat. of some of our native plants and things that grow here. If I could ever do that for you, come over and talk about uh, uh, plants great. and how they're used in the wild. And, you know, uh, little boys love that. How would I survive in the wild? Yes. Yeah. Kind of thing. I do talks like that for children frequently. Okay. Uh -huh. Good. We'll certainly keep that in mind. Well, great. Right. How about that? We're all about making connections. Yes. Here. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. But yeah, I was, when I was in graduate school, of course, I had a friend of mine who actually did this master's work on pawpaw. Yeah. And we actually went to Maryland uh, to a pawpaw patch uh, to learn a little bit more about pawpaw. And we learned the song. I was gonna say there is a song about. Okay. Yeah. Are we ready? Can we sing it? Yeah, pick it up, pop, pop, put them in, them in the basket. basket. Yeah, pop, pop, put them in the basket. Yeah, I remember that. And what? Way down yonder in the, the pop, pop patch. patch. So there you have it. How about that? <laughs> and also, I've been to, been to mention that Kentucky has a huge pop, pop hmm. research project, and they've collected all the named cultivars. They have anti-carcinogen properties the twigs and the leaves, which are being investigated. Okay. Okay. So that's all legit. Purdue and anti -what? University of Kentucky, anti-cancer. Anti oh, okay, yeah. okay. Cancer. Yeah, mm -hmm. wow. so it's got to be a big deal, really. Uh, very interesting and probably deserves our attention more. I Definitely. think it does. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I think it does. All right, we appreciate that information and that history. That was real good. Good. All right, here's our Q&A session. Ms. Becky, you jump in there with us now. Okay. All right. We have uh, some viewer emails. We have some great questions. So we want to thank our viewers for these questions. Here's our first one. My small backyard in Arlington backs up to a row of large trees with open pasture land beyond. For more than a week, we have been hearing a loud chorus <laughs> of cicadas. Mm. It goes on all day until 7 p.m. at night when it stops. What is the cicada cycle? This must be a big year. Sincerely, Miss Betty. Yes, it is a big year. It happens to be the year, mm -hmm. which is the 13th year. Mm -hmm. Wow. So we've been hearing a lot about these cicadas, right? We have, and uh, it's funny. I just wrote this week's, last week's column about it. Oh, good, I, good, because good. Because I, I think so many people have a misunderstanding about the cicada. Uh, there's kind of a human reaction to insects to kill sure. it. You know, let's kill it. And it's making all the noise is driving me crazy. It's such an amazing natural phenomenon. <laughs> I may, this may be the last one I witness. No, I, may, I hope to hear at least one more. And right. if I'm real lucky, I'll get to hear two, two more. more. Uh -huh, so uh -huh. it's thrilling that that little insect can make that much noise. Um, they are really beneficial in the long run for all the wildlife. I once adopted a puppy that had been living on cicadas. So wow. it kind of opened my eyes up. I thought, well, gosh, if I was a wild creature, all the protein mm -hmm. lying around. Mm -hmm. I'm a mama turkey and I've got 20 poults trucking along behind me. Oh, they're fat. That's they're right. just so good, you know? <laughs> Everything eats them, even humans, you know, in other cultures. You can mm -hmm. find cicada recipes. It's not all good, and they do a little damage yeah. to the trees. They slit some twigs. Yeah. Some twigs will fall to the ground. You'll get a little bit of browning. If it's a small tree and I just planted it, I might put some netting over it to protect that from happening. Yeah. Uh, and it might make you lose a little bit of a fruit crop, yeah. you know, or a nut crop. So I'm not saying it's all plus. One more thing it does, I think people sure. don't think about, the little tunnels that they make, you know, they go underground, the little hatching nymphs from the eggs, and they feed on the roots just a tiny bit for 13 years. It's not enough to hurt the tree. When they burrow up, they leave these tunnels. So think about what happens when it rains. Aha. Uh -huh. That water, water infiltrates, right. and the leaf litter goes down there That's with right. it. So it improves the soil, everything about it. So there's many, many good things about the cicada. So tell them to celebrate it. Yeah, it's almost, yeah, it's aeration <laughs> almost. Right, yeah. aeration. Uh -huh. That's pretty good. Yeah, mm -hmm. cicadas are, they're fine. Yeah. They're fine. They're you cool. Know, they're cool. Mating, all that good stuff. Uh -huh. the, and what you were talking about with mm -hmm. the little slits, mm -hmm. the female, of course, is laying her eggs. Yes. You know, in those little slits, yeah. you know, in those little twigs and... That's fine, but she can lay 400 to 600 eggs. Wow. I think that's pretty amazing. That is. And their life cycle is what? Wow. About like four to six weeks. Yes. Yeah, so Underground not... for 13 years. Yeah, and then you live four to six weeks. weeks. Yes, I'd be shouting too. <laughs> yeah, I would too. It's like, God, I got four to six weeks. I'm going to let it out. That's for sure. But I, I think they're amazing. I, I went running not too long ago, and of course, I saw a lot of dead ones on the uh -huh. sidewalk now, and I saw birds getting out to a few of them oh, as yeah. well. Uh -huh. um, but I think they're pretty neat. And they're, lot, they're not locusts. No, right. I had somebody called the office and they were like, yeah, it's this, this, this locust. They're mm -hmm. not a locust. No. And when I think locust, I think 
grasshoppers. Yes. You know, I don't mm -hmm. think cicadas. Right. Uh, so again, they're fine. And they don't eat foliage because we had somebody else right. that called mm -hmm. to think that they were eating their oak tree leaves. Mm -hmm. Like, no, no, not the cicadas. No. no. So they're fine. Yes. All right. Mm. The noise is good. Thanks, okay. Miss Betty, for that question. Uh -huh. All right, here's our next via email. Dear Chris, I know you're a weed scientist. What in the world has snuggled itself in my bee bomb? It's about three foot tall and looks dangerous. Leaves are four to six inches. I don't know if I should touch it, kill it, or welcome it to my family <laughs> plot. Right. I like that. Okay. <laughs> Please help. And this is from Miss Sherry in Drummond's, Tennessee. We can help you. Miss Sherry, guess what that is? It's prickly lettuce. Hmm. That's what that is. Prickly, prickly lettuce. It can be a summer annual or biennial. Hmm. So you have a rosette of leaves pretty close to the soil surface. And then as that weed starts to mature, it produces a woody stem, okay? On the woody stem, you get the leaves, they're alternate. The stem and the leaves actually have tiny spines. Mm. So you reach out to grab it, it's gonna let you know, oh. okay? It actually produces a yellow flower. It kind of looks like a dandelion, okay? Beautiful yellow flower. It reproduces by seeds, okay? And it can get about six, six feet. Can really? You eat, can you eat it? You can eat the younger leaves. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. You can okay. eat those younger leaves. It loves uh, fertile soil, soils that are well drained. Um, here's the deal. It can actually deal with drought-like conditions. Yeah. And then not so drought-like conditions. So. It can deal with full sun or it can deal with partial shade. That's a true weed. That's it's a, a true weed. That's a weed. <laughs> That's a true weed. So, Ms. Sherry, I'm going to leave you with this. You do with it what you wish. That's Who am I to say it's a weed? Right. You know, actually, it's in a place where it wants to be, it's comfortable, mm -hmm. but if you don't want it to be there, certainly you can pull it. Mm -hmm. But okay. the definition of a weed, a plant dealing mm -hmm. with an unhappy gardener, yeah. mm -hmm. if you're happy with it. Right. If you're happy with it, it's not. not a weed. Okay. But that's a little history about the prickly lettuce. Good. That's what it is. Okay. Thank you for that question. All right. Here's our next viewer email. It says, hi, Chris. I have a long flower bed in the backyard alongside the back of my house. I have only planted hostas and lantana flowers in this bed. We have mulch in the bed and a circle hose that hardly ever is turned on unless it doesn't rain for a month or so. The flower bed looks like it has mold in it. What should I do? You want this no, one? No, you take it. <laughs> Go right ahead. There's been a lot I of that do? this spring, hasn't there? It's been a lot of that. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's one of the fungus that will grow in the mulch, mm -hmm. uh, slime molds. They're called sometimes dog vomit mm -hmm. fungus, different names for it. Oh, I've had that. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're pretty interesting, and they're, they they're not doing anything that's going to hurt your plants. They're just breaking down mulch. That's all it is. Yeah. Okay. So they're just kind of cool to look at. I mean, you know, if you just don't like looking at them, you can just kind of stir them up that's and mess them up and that kind of thing. But, yeah, not a problem at all. I was a little bit curious, though, when I read that question, is why they're growing lantana and hostel. I, was I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> because one shade, one sun, right? right? Uh -huh. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. Even I knew that. <laughs> Even Miss Becky knew that. Either, either her hostel are suffering or her lantana are suffering. Right. I, I hate to say that, to shame them. I'm, I don't mean to. But maybe well, maybe the bed has enough of a reach that part maybe, of it's maybe it in does. the sun and part of but the But hey, she gets two questions answered. This there is, we go. Uh, Miss Diane here yeah. in Memphis. See, yeah, she gets two questions answered for the mm -hmm. price of one. And some, yeah, houses, I wondered that. some houses are more sun tolerant. Yes, they are. So, mm -hmm. Yes, they are. Could be. Okay. So uh, there you have it. Just stir it up. I mean, I've had this in my own landscape, and I just stirred it up. I love the name fine. Dog Vomit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> memorable. Yeah, it's memorable. I won't forget that. No, you won't forget that. He definitely won't. And it actually looks like it. It does. So... All right then, Ms. Diane, there you have it. Here's our next question. Once kale has flowered, will it continue to grow or die? What do you think about that one? It's gonna die. It's gonna die. Okay. It's, it's, <laughs> once it's made seed, it's, it's yeah, done its thing, it's gone, which is fine. It often recedes. Oh, yeah, it often recedes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so yeah, once it does that, it's gonna die off. Right, and I kind of enjoy the flowers while they're up. I mean, it's kind of a... I think it's neat. Yeah, it's a winter <laughs> crop usually for me, and the flowers come up a lot of times just as spring is happening, and the early pollinators mm -hmm. are there and get a little bit, and they're kind of showy. I actually have eaten the flowers on them. Have you? They're really good. I, I like to, especially when they're in the bud stage, <laughs> wow, okay. I just kind of she graze would, on them. She would survive in the woods. She would. I would. <laughs> Try them. They're really tasty. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Try them. She may be our modern day Sacagawea. Huh? That's right. <laughs> Do you How cook them? That? Are you no, I just eat them raw. Okay. Uh -huh. 
Oh, just pop them in your mouth. I just pop them in that? my mouth when I'm out in the yard. But I will say this about the leaves of the kale, though. After a while, I mean, they're going to start tasting bitter. They oh, do. They do. And hard. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're not going to be too, uh, no. too good to eat on right. the palate. Uh, so, all right. Ms. Becky, Ms. Carol, we're out of time. Okay. Remember, we love to hear from you. Send us a letter or an email with your gardening questions. Send your email to familyplot at wkno.org. The mailing address is Family Plot, 7151 Cherry Farms Road, Cordova, Tennessee, 38016. That's all we have time for today. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris Cooper. Be sure to join us next time for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. Be safe. Production funding for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South, is provided by Goodwinds Landscape and Garden Center, in Germantown since 1943, and continuing to offer its plants for successful gardening with seven greenhouses and three acres of plants, plus comprehensive landscape services. International Paper Foundation. The WKNO Production Fund. The WKNO Endowment Fund and by viewers like you. Thank you.